Hi everyone. Uh, we're going to talk about inverse functions, uh, particularly for today. Uh, we're going to talk about inverse course with negative value. Okay, the value uh, is not the angle, but value is the uh, output uh, trigonometric ratio. Say for example, so what has happened to this one? Say uh, sine negative x. You may consider about this one, cos negative x and tangent negative x, okay? So uh, they are not inverse functions. However, uh, we may have to review before we go through the real uh, negative value related inverse cos function, okay? So sine negative x equals to negative sine x, okay? And then cos negative x, just positive cos x. And then tan negative x is negative tan x. The reason is this, sine and tan functions are uh, odd functions, while cos function is an even function, okay? So, in terms of this one, say inverse stuff, uh, if you do inverse negative x, yeah, you can easily say, oh, it will be negative uh, inverse just positive x, okay? We'll talk about it a little later because we're gonna cover over here. And for tangent, if you do inverse tangent negative x, it's simply negative inverse x. It's so simple as, as this. But there is an exception, okay? Inverse cos does not follow this sort of common rule due to some reasons, okay? So that will be cos inverse negative x. It's not just cos negative x, but it must be pi minus cos inverse x due to the uh, domain and the range stuff, okay? So that is one of the exceptions. Well, probably just one exception is inverse sine, inverse cos, inverse tangent. Uh, due to the fact, your school teachers will be fond of making the question by this topic, okay? Because that is the exception. So that's one thing you have to be in mind, okay? You have to put, put it in your mind. So, uh, that's the that uh, property or formula is one of the highly likely uh, the topic for you know applying to your school exam. Okay, so let's go ahead with, with this one. Say for exa for example here, we're going to talk about we're going to substitute negative half. Okay, well that is not uh, n uh, positive cos inverse x, but due to the fact that we need to follow the rule, is a pi minus cos inverse a half. Then uh, what is the value for cos inverse a half? It will be, say, you should remember this one, okay? So that will be pi on 3. And then calculate it, it will be 2 pi on 3. So as simple as this one. You understand that? So again, uh, before we move on to the next topic, uh, that formula is really, really important because it's just simply an exception. So exception is the way not many people can remember. You understand that? Okay, and then your school teacher will likely uh, make the question based on this exception. Okay, so that's, that's the one of the important tips for this one. We'll do question one. Uh, we're going to prove why that property is true, okay, no matter what x values are, okay? So to do that, there are lots of lots of different ways of proving that properties. However, for this one, we, we, are, we are going to start from that one by letting the left-hand side do something. In this case, I'm going to let y equals the left hand side, okay? So let y equals to inverse cos negative x. Now, in the inverse function, say, say, say for example, cos pi on 4 equals to what? Can you remember the exact value? So it will be uh, 1 on square root 2, or you can say root 2 or 2, whichever way, okay? So it, this is a rationalized, this is not rationalized, doesn't really matter, okay? Now, in doing this one, say, we're going to swap that value, say, cos, okay? We're gonna, we can swap them, 1 on square root 2, it will be pi on 4. Then, we need to tell them, oh, yeah, we swap the values, so you have to tell, oh, this is an inverse, okay? So that's our notation of the inverse function, particularly in the trigonometric function. Now, we're going to do the same thing as we did over here in this example. So we've got to swap this value and this value. Well, these two pronumerals, we're going to swap them. Okay? 
So what happened? Minus x moves to the left hand side, and y moves to the right hand side, and then negative one gets disappeared. Understand that? It's exactly the same story over here. And then, okay, so we do some algebra here. So we just we move, uh, we multiply negative negative for both sides, okay? And then, okay, think about here. All say cos y has negative in front of it. So what do you think here? Yeah. So in here, uh, we know that yeah, there are four quadrants, first, second, third, and fourth quadrant stuff. What do you remember, guys? If the negative cos, so we need to take that consideration of the negative in front of it. The negative cos, say, all station to central, say everything is positive, only sign is positive, but cos is negative. So that's one of them. And only tangent is positive, so therefore cos is negative in this time. Cos is positive, but negative. So we're not, we got to talk about second and third quadrant in this case. Now, do you all also remember, okay, you have to remember about the range of the inverse cos function. The range of the inverse cos function is in between 0 to pi. So we need to talk about only the first and the second quadrant. Understand that, okay, guys, do you remember that? Now, uh, that therefore, say negative cos y indicates us the angle is in the second quadrant. Therefore, we need to look at the format, which is the second quadrant, which is pi minus the angle, which is theta in this case. Do you understand that, okay? So y is same as theta. So what we can do now, cos y gets changed, cos pi minus y, as in the format in here. Then we got to eliminate the leading negative. Does it make sense, okay? Now, we're going to do the same thing, okay? We're gonna, we are going to swap x and pi minus y together. Okay, we're going to cross, well not cross multiply, we've got to cross swap. Then what happens? Inverse, inverse notation, remember minus one on, on top, on the right hand side of the other uh, cos functions? Like that, okay, so pi minus y moves to the left hand side and x moves to the right hand side and we do have now inverse notation of the cos function. Okay, we are almost finished now. What do you think about the next step? Yeah, next step is put it back. See, y is cos inverse negative x. Then we have y over there. So we're going to put the whole thing over here. Okay, can you write it before I show the final solution? That is it, okay? So that was y over here. So pi minus inverse cos negative x is equals to inverse cos x, which is what we are required to prove. Doesn't make sense. It's not really too much straightforward. Uh, well, this proof question requires you to have lots of prerequisites, understanding and knowledge. Say, for example, you need to know how you can start, likewise this one. You also need to know about the four quadrants, okay? So all station to central stuff. And also you need to know about the range of the inverse cos function. Say, Etc. There are lots of lots of uh, skills required to uh, to prove this property is true. Okay, so it is quite important for you. Okay, so I recommend you to try all the steps uh, be taken by yourself. Okay, okay. So that's simple question one. We move on to the second question there. We got to evaluate. Easy. Okay, so um, as long as we have negatives. So what did I show you at the beginning of the lesson? Yes, yeah, so follow the rule, which is the exception of the inverse trig functions, which is pi minus cos inverse square root on th uh, uh, root three on two. Okay. Okay. Now, what is the value to make a cos function is square root on two, which is pi on six, which, which is sixty degrees. But again, we need to stick to the radian measurement for this topic. Okay. And then do simple uh, e evaluation you should be able to get the answer of 5 pi on 6. Simple, okay? Okay, so that's the second question. We'll do the uh, third question over here. Negative half. We did, uh, we did this same question in the, in the uh, example at the earlier uh, stage of this topic. So see how you go. Give it a try, guys. Okay? Negative, what do you do? In negative, uh, 
cos inverse, inverse cos negative, yeah, pi minus inverse cos a half. So what is the value for inverse cos a half? It will be the one of the exact values, which is pi on 3, and get the answer with the by, the, by the use of the simple algebra, you will get the final evaluation done. I hope all makes sense for you guys, okay? So in taking these chains, guys, so one of the important thing is uh, inverse, whatever inverse, always remember, inverse negative x equals to pi minus cos inverse, uh, sorry, just x. So this is the way you can remove the internal negative from the inverse cos function. Okay, guys? So please don't forget about this one. Okay, I'll see you at the next lesson, guys.